Hi, I'm Brett, and welcome to the latest edition of Random Book Talk. The Wild Girl by Kate Forsyth is the story of Dorchen Wild, next door neighbour to the Brothers Grimm. Now, if you love fairy tales, history and romance, then you will adore and relish The Wild Girl. Now, some treats and surprises in store as we talk with Kate about her wonderful new book. So be sure to stay tuned on how you can win a $100 book voucher. Hi, Kate. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Brett. Dorchen Wilde is a spirited character. She's smart, dutiful and in love with Wilhelm Grimm and, and instrumental in bringing him quite a few story tales. Uh, can you tell us a bit about Dorchen and, um, and why you were drawn to write about her? Well, I stumbled across the story of Dorchen and Willem while I was researching an earlier book of mine, which was all to do with fairy tales as well. And I was just swept away by this amazing story. They grew up next door to each other in a tiny medieval town in in the middle of Germany. Um, it's a town you know, famous for its forests and palaces and castles. Um, you know, she was best friends with the youngest daughter of the Grimm family and they grew up together. And then you know, as, the, as the little German kingdom was overrun by Napoleon's troops, yeah. uh, Jacob and Willem began to you know, try and collect stories. And they didn't know that they had this amazing source of stories living right next door to them. Right. Dorch and Wild told the Grimm brothers almost one quarter of all of their stories. Did she? And she told them the most astonishing stories, things like Hansel and Gretel, Rumpelstiltskin, Six Swans, um, you know, the Elves and the Shoemaker. I mean, I can just go on and on and on, list, you know, some of the best known and best loved fairy tales of all time, all came from this one teenage girl. Uh, she was, you know, she was an amazing source. Yeah, yeah. And what really drew me to her story is, of course, the fact that she and Willem fell in love while they were sharing these fairy tales. And they, you know, it's a story about thwarted desire, longing, heartbreak, and eventual happiness. Yeah, it takes them a long while, but it does. Um, I don't want to give any too much away from the book. I mean, Dorchen is a very resourceful character, and towards the end of the book, we learn that she's also a fine cook. Um, and that you've been able to, to source one of her original recipes, which dates back to the early uh, 1800s. So if you'd like to go to our website now, you can download this recipe. It's for a damson plum cake. Um, and I believe um, you have cooked it. It is, it's delicious. And my children loved it as well. <laughs> so go to our website now, um, search The Wild Girl and download the recipe. We'd be really interested to know how you go. So show us some of your pics on our Facebook page or write to us and let us know if it's a tasty cake. Now I have to confess to not knowing that much about the Grimms. Um, how many boys were there again in the family? There was five or six or? There were six in the family, five boys and one girl. And um, her, her name was Lottie. Yeah. And in the Wild family, which lived next door to them, there were six girls and one boy. And I just loved that the Grimm family grew up next door to the Wild family. <laughs> it just sounds like a fairy tale in itself. <laughs> it does, it does. And the Grimms had it pretty tough. I mean, their existence was they were, grim. When they were collecting the fairy tales, they were so poor that they could only um, afford one meal a day. They had to cut up their little um, sister's dresses to make them sell cravats because right. they couldn't afford you know, to buy linen. And you know, towards the end, they were actually burning their furniture so that they could keep warm in the very cold winters. Um, 1812 was one of the coldest winters you know, in history, and they had to burn their furniture to actually, you know, be able to, to keep on working. And you really bring that to life in the book, you know, just mm. how uh, rare or expensive paper was, how valuable mm. and precious these things were. Um, the, the tension that you set up between Dorchen and Wilhelm it begins right at, from the outset of the book and, um, and runs the course of the book. Um, Wilhelm, in many ways, to me, struck me as a bit of a plodder in, mm. in his pursuit of, of Dorchen. What, can, what do you know of him and why it took them so long to kind of work think, things through, if I you will? I think that you're looking at him from the point of view of a 21st century man. While, um, you know, they met and fell in love in the early 1800s. And in Germany at that time, the, the social rules were very, very narrow. And, you know, if, you're, if you fell in, in love with a young woman and her father 
you know, forbade you to ever see her again. Well, you you had to obey him. It, it would have been yeah. uh, a terrible scandal to have tried to see a girl after you were told to, to keep away from her. Yeah. And, um, you know, the Grimms were Lutherans. They were German Protestants. And so, um, you know, this again was a very strict religious, um, in, in, you know, belief. And it was all about honour and truthfulness and abiding by you know what the church and the state did in our our times we're used to celebrating the, the pursuit of individual happiness mm. but in in 19th century germany that that would have been unforgivable mm. to have put your own personal happiness against the needs and demands of your family mm. your society and your church mm. and you know william grimm uh, i i've read his diaries i know how much he suffered how much he longed to be with Dr and how much he loved her, but it wasn't until it was it was socially acceptable for them, until he was able to support her, that they were able to be together. Yeah, there's so much history in this book, particularly around the Brothers Grimm, mm -hmm. and, and you've mentioned some of the incredible fairy tales that Dorchen gave to the Brothers Grimm. If you'd like to test your knowledge about uh, the fairy tales that Dorchen uh, brought to the Brothers Grimm, or in just in fact you wanted to learn more about them, um, go to our website. Again, we've got a fantastic trivia fact sheet um, prepared with your help, mm. Kate, so you can test your knowledge and um, see if you do better than I did. Um, <laughs> I wasn't very good at all. Um, so thank you again for that. Part of the history that really fascinated me, and in fact it's sort of the backdrop to the wild girl, are the Napoleonic Wars. Um, and so many of these small kingdoms were conquered and it was a very turbulent time. Um, is Napoleon a, a favourite subject of yours? Because I, I found the scholarly touch mm -hmm. um, imbued your book with an authenticity um, that, that really was incredible. It, I felt like I truly understood the impact that that must have had on them. Can I tell you I knew nothing about Napoleon really? before I started writing the book? Um, in actual fact, it was a big gap in my historical knowledge because we never studied it at school and I'd never understood. I mean, I understood the French Revolution and then I, I knew about France in the First World War, but how did Napoleon become emperor? I never understood it. Yeah. And so I had to do a lot of reading and a lot of research. But it's so fascinating and I learned so much. Um, and it was quite interesting uh, uh, for me to imagine what it must have been like to have been a young woman like Dorchen, you know, seeing the French march into your town, you know, see them impose their laws, their language, even their rules of fashion were all imposed by the French upon, you know, the conquered German people. Mm. Um, where Dorchen lived was actually um, mashed together with half a dozen other small kingdoms mm. and then given to uh, Napoleon's younger brother, Jerome, mm. And, and that's he, Westphalia? Yeah, the yeah. Kingdom of Westphalia. And he just bankrupted it with his mm. parties and his mistresses mm. and his, his liking for diamonds and white satin. Mm. And, you know, he ruled there for seven years. Um, he was only 22 years old. It's amazing. Mm. It's amazing. Um, now, one of the things that we're really keen to do is to encourage readers to not only read your book, but mm. to review it. So we'd really like to encourage you to post a, a review of The Wild Girl on our website. Each month, we are giving away a $100 random house book voucher to spend on any books on our website. So just sign in to our community on the website, and when you're ready, write the best review ever. We're introducing a, a new segment in, in the interview called really kind of getting to know the author better. So um, <laughs> we've borrowed a few questions to finish yep. um, the interview today um, to help our readers learn a little bit more about you. So we'll start with the first question. What is your favourite word? And I think this is just a terrible question because there are so many <laughs> wonderful and What's amazing your favorite words word at out the moment? there. Can I tell you, I had to choose between eerie and perilous and discombobulated. But after thinking about it, I actually think that my favorite word is joy. Partly because uh, my grandmother was named Joy and my middle name is Joy and my daughter's middle name is Joy. But also I think it's because that's what my books are always all about is the discovery of joy, you know, coming through darkness to find brightness and joyousness. And so that's my favorite word today. Lovely. Now, what is your least favorite word? No. <laughs> what turns you on? Um, I think my friends and my family and anything to do with books. I like to talk about books, I like to read books, and I like to write books. Yeah. So I think they're the things that make me happiest. And what turns you off? Housework. 
<laughs> it, turns, it turns me off as well. I know. What sound or noise do you love? I feel that I should say the sound of my children's laughter, but I'm actually going to go with the sound of a champagne cork being popped. Uh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, what sound or noise do you hate? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Good. <laughs> and what is your favourite curse word? This comes from meaning so much 19th century fiction, but I think uh, hell and damnation. <laughs> <laughs> and what profession, other than your own, uh, would you most like to attempt? I wouldn't want to be anything but a writer. Yeah. I can't even begin to imagine myself not being, it's all I've ever wanted to be. And um, usually when people say, if you were something else, what would you be? I normally say, desperately unhappy. <laughs> so that probably leads well into the next my next question, which is what profession would you least like to do? Anything to do with numbers. So yeah. I'd have to say an, an accountant. Uh -huh. In fact, I think my, my accountant has turned grey since meeting me. <laughs> <laughs> now, if heaven exists, what would you like God to say um, when you arrive at the pearly gates? I think I'd like God to say to me, Kate, you have done your best to give the gift that I gave you. Well done. Thank you so much, Kate. It's been a joy to, to speak with you. Such a pleasure. Thank you again. If you would like to learn more about uh, The Wild Girl, please head to our website now at randomhouse.com.au where you'll be able to download a sample chapter. We've got the trivia fact sheet. We've got the recipe and, uh, and more great stuff for you to learn about The Wild Girl and um, Kate's other, other books, including Bitter Greens. While you're there, why not sign up to our e-newsletter and learn more about great books coming from Random House. Thanks again and see you next month.